Well, this weekend was a little jumbled. My dad was up for a visit, uh, and everything got pushed back a day, so I wanted to jump in on this Monday. I'm actually recording this Monday morning, very early. Coffee should be ready soon, and then I can continue on with actual life. However, very quickly, there's a couple things. There is an addition to the box o jank, courtesy of something my dad brought up to me, and then February's history by mail as February wraps up. So joining the box o jank, including, yay, bubblegum, quote-unquote bubblegum, is two packs of... The Flintstones movie cards with bubble gum. You're lying because it's not bubble. Hasn't been bubble since uh, 1993. And even then it's questionable. But these will contain... There's two foil etch cards randomly inserted in every 36 packs. Can the odds be broken? I don't know. Into the box. Next, and to wrap up, <coughs> History by Mail is back. And this is for February, so we are going to get in and see, and we have a document. I see a name I recognize right there, Susan B. Anthony. Um, actually, Rochester uh, Rochester icon. Her uh, grave is in the cemetery right next door. I went to college at the University of Rochester. Oh, is this one they, I think it would be, when she was arrested for voting. North District of New York, United States of America versus Susan B. Anthony, indictment for illegal voting. Right there. A true bill. From 2570. And once again, okay, this is exhibit something. Man, the handwriting. I wish I. Edward. Edwin. Sorry, P. March was sworn in. Well, here's the original document in whoever's handwriting this is. Um. I would assume probably the U.S. Attorney Crowley there. <clears throat> but fascinating things. And here we got the tran... Is this the transcript? The type version, yes. Okay, of Exhibit B. I thought there was a number. Uh, exhibit B, U.S. versus Susan B. Anthony, June 17th to 18th, 1873. In s misspellings intentionally left untouched. Okay, see, I like that. Uh, Edwin P. March was sworn in on behalf of the people and testified as follows. Do you reside in the city of Rochester? Yes, sir. How long? It has been my home for 27 years. What is your age? 32. What is your occupation? Letter carrier. U.S. letter carrier? Yes, sir. Did you act as inspector of election on the 5th of November? Yes, sir. Whereabouts? In the 1st District in the 8th Ward. Uh... I cannot remember, unless they, I don't know if they've redone the wards in Rochester since then, but I know the 8th Ward wouldn't have been far from where I went to school because the ninth Ward was right across the Genesee River from the college campus. Uh, actually, there's Inspector. Did you know the defendant, Miss Anthony? Yes, sir. Did you see her on the day of election? Yes, sir. Whereabouts? At the polls until the election closed. In the first. End of replica page. Okay, so that was the end of this page. So everything else below that is additional that they did not include. District of the 8th Ward, did you see her vote that day? Yes. Whereabouts? The 1st District of the 8th Ward, what time of day was it? I think it was about 9 o'clock in the morning. State what officers she voted for. That I don't know. Well, why would he know? You know, this wasn't Chicago in those days where you could uh, where they stood over your shoulder and watched you vote. Uh, I didn't take the tickets myself. Who took the tickets? I think it was B.W. Jones. I was checking the book. You say you were checking a book. What book was it? The Register. Is that here? Yes, sir. Book handed. And occasion. Ah, here we go. Was Miss Anthony dressed as she is now, objected to by defense's counsel, or defendant's counsel, I'm sorry. Was Miss Anthony dressed in the apparel of a woman, and she had the, and she, had she that appearance of a woman, I'm sorry, objected to as entirely immaterial and impertinent. The council makes no defense on the ground that Miss A, Anthony is not the person who voted, objection overruled. Answer, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, a vote was challenged by Sylvester Lewis. State was done after his challenge. He required that the oaths should be given, which was done. 
by who by by B. W. Jones, who was the chairman of the board. Were the supervisors of election attending the district? Yes. Who were they? S. J. Wagner and Daniel Warner. Okay, I read that right. By Mr. Von Van Voorhis. Superintendent, did, did Miss Anthony's name? Did not Miss Anthony's name appear properly upon the register? Yes, sir. At the time she offered her vote, did other ladies whose names were on the register offer to vote? Yes, sir. How many were there altogether? There were 15 who voted upon the preliminary oath being administered to Miss Anthony. Was she question my one? Yes, sir. The preliminary oath. This is interesting, because I, I don't know too much about the details of the, of the, the incident. But I'm just I'm skipping around. My brain's going all over the place. Uh, first it registered, uh, was 1st November, 1872. Du, 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 du. Okay, here we go. Was Miss Anthony sworn in at the time of just Not while I was there. Document continues. Wow, for 12 more handwritten pages, totaling 17 written pages. That is a lot of pages, but, you know, and here we go. Here's the hearing transcript from U.S. versus Susan B. Anthony. I will just... Kind of scroll up, Edwin P. March testified to seeing Anthony vote illegally voting in the 1872 election in Rochester, New York. Uh, this is as Grant ran for president against New York Tribune founder and editor Horace Greeley. Susan B. Anthony, her three sisters, see I forgot about the three sisters part, walked to a voter registration office at a local Rochester barbershop attempted to register to vote. When questioned by elector, election of inspectors, Susan quoted the 14th Amendment and threatened to sue the inspectors if they refused to register the women. When prominent Rochester lawyer and women's suffrage supporter John Van Voorhis was consulted, he advised the inspectors to register the sisters so that the culpability would be on the women. Susan B. Anthony then publicized the event and was interviewed by a local newspaper about her voter registration. As a result, an estimated 50 Rochester women registered to vote. See, that part I actually did not know. Four days later, poll watched, the poll watcher challenged their right to vote. The women took an oath stating they were qualified to vote. Had They, they had been registered. At the end, the election inspectors allowed the women to vote, and Susan B. Anthony voted for Ulysses S. Grant. I think that's one thing. I don't recall, really, who she had voted for. You always hear that she voted, but I cannot recall. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, another one of the very, very big uh, women's suffrage suffragettes, the original ones. Uh, da, 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 okay, here, here, arrest and trial. On November 14th, warrants were risk issued. I'm sorry for the arrest of Susan B. Anthony. The women who had voted with her, the elections inspectors who had allowed her to vote. Wow, everybody's going. Anthony had assumed she would be turned away at the polling station, after which she pilot, planned to file a suit in federal court. She was surprised to be allowed to vote to only then be arrested. Took advantage of the publicity... Uh, she spoke in 29 municipalities in Monroe County, New York. wonder if then she spoke where I live. In, in a spe Her speech entitled, Is it a crime for U.S. citizens to vote? She read the four this first section of the 14th Amendment, which applied to all persons born or naturalized in the United States, and then asked, are women persons? It, <coughs> excuse me. In 1873, she was tried in federal court for violating Federal Enforcement Act of 1870, which prohibited voting in congressional elections by people deemed unqualified to vote by state law. Basically, I think we all know which groups of people they were referring to in that time. She, yes, she lost the suit. We do know that. Richard Crowley, okay, requested the case be transferred. <laughs> Not only was the verdict delivered by U.S. Supreme Court justices have greater weight, the Supreme Court also recently ruled to narrow the definition of U.S. citizenship under the 14th Amendment. Uh, violating New York state law, he directed to deliver a guilty verdict, and the jury promptly found Anthony guilty rather than taking time to deliberate. Ah. Oh no, the system works again, doesn't it, folks? Pay $100 for violating New York state law. When she refused to pay the fine, announced she would not be jailed for failing to pay. Interesting. Had she been jailed, she could have filed a writ of habeas corpus to be heard before the Supreme Court. However, at the time, at that time, criminal cases were not permitted to appeal to the Supreme Court, so Hunt's verdict was final. Was only allowed to speak on the final day of the trial, the system works, due to common law, a common law precedent that prevented criminal defendants from testifying in federal court. <sighs> it was, um... 
Close to five decades later, the 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. You know, I mean, what do you even say? You can fall back on the default, it was a different time, which it was. But at the same time, it being a different time <coughs> really wasn't that uh, valid an excuse. So that's going to wrap up this um, miscellaneous Monday. Uh, still waiting for more magic sets to come back. Tomorrow, though, on the last day of February, I uh, actually have uh, something interesting because we only had one TTM that came back this week uh, thus far. As Like I say, I'm recording this early Monday. I don't know if anything came to the P.O. Box yet today, but I'll find out in a few hours. However, if not, I have something special planned, so please, everybody, stay tuned. We will see you soon, and don't forget... March the 1st, International Spinach Day, Volume 2, plus the Goose Hunt Edition. Stay tuned. Check out Julie Farnham for details on that. I will leave a link to her channel down below. Take care, everybody.